I'm going to divide this one into two parts. The first part is going to be uh, some updates on my thoughts on the Nikolai Mew case, also known as the Apple River stabbing case. And the second part is going to be my thoughts on um, the attitude towards, let's say, teenage accountability. Now, before I get into that, a disclaimer. If you are a young person, if you're a teenager, please, please don't think that I'm generalizing here. Please don't think this is an attack on all teenagers. Um, I was a teenager. I've been young and I would never, you know, crudely generalize an entire group. So please don't think I'm doing that. There are many, many young people who um, engage in very productive things. They engage in the voluntary sector. They're very intelligent, thoughtful, creative. Um, so in no way is this meant to be a video that's like anti-teenager. However, I am talking about a certain type of teenager. And um, one reason, in fact, is I think they pose threat to other teenagers. Um, but I, I think it is important. In a way, if you're a young person, if you're a teenager... I am not attacking all of you, so please don't take it personally. Um, that having been said, I've just watched a video about half an hour long uh, by Christina Randall. She covers sort of true crime uh, type situations and some other things. And she had a very interesting take on this case. I thought a very good analysis and very, um, very thoughtful. You know, there's been a lot of sensationalism around this. I thought she laid out her arguments very well and objectively. And she she had some information there that which I wasn't familiar with, which actually reiterates my position. I feel even stronger now that um, I, I, my gut feeling is something very rotten has happened in the justice system there. Now, um, just a quick point, I say... I, I mentioned Wisconsin in the last video. I think the river is in Wisconsin, but the communities involved are actually Minnesota. So maybe someone can clarify that. I think the communities involved are actually in Minnesota, so the trial is in Minnesota. Um, but regardless, I think this reeks of small-town justice. I, I really get that impression. There's basically two camps. One camp, look at this as... An adult man who went on a knife rampage and he's dangerous and he needs to be jailed. And a young guy lost his life and four others were seriously injured. So yeah, he must be a maniac. He should be jailed. The other camp, and it's one I fall into, is that this was a mob versus one man and the one man was acting in self-defence. Now, I want to be very clear. I think the use of a knife was reckless. I don't think he should escape scot-free. That's not my position. Um, because there was a death and there were serious injuries. I think it would be wrong if he just walks free and nothing happens. He should be accountable for that. It was reckless. He shouldn't have used the knife. Um, I don't think having a knife is necessarily suspicious in a river context. My understanding is it was a sort of knife that's used for cutting rope. So we're not talking about a big dagger. Um, it was a small knife. Still could be a deadly weapon, of course, but context is very important in all of this. Um, what I find very troubling is the people who are tackling, attacking Nikolai Mu and sort of treating him like a dangerous psychopathic killer are utterly ignoring the context of this, utterly ignoring the fact that he was surrounded by a mob, many of them drunk, screaming in his face. Um, I really have a problem with that. I have a problem that's one versus 13 and the one is somehow the villain in that sort of adversarial situation. We're not talking about like what happened in Sydney this week where some maniac goes into a public area and just stabs a lot of people. That was a serious incident, the worst massacre in Australia, I believe, in seven years. Um, seven people killed and others wounded. Um, it's a very different situation from that. In this situation, you have a man who is surrounded and he lashed out. Now, I've seen a lot of people saying he should have just walked away. What they're failing to understand is that his wife and dog were on the embankment, sort of beyond the group. So he had to go through that group to get to his wife and dog. Um, also, there's this assumption that the group of teenagers own the river, like he had no right to be there. Well, he said that he was trying to find his phone, and 
frankly, it doesn't matter what he was doing. If it was within the law, it's none of their business. You know, they said they thought he was a pervert. Well, if they really believed that, they could have contacted the police. Um, what they decided to do was form a lynch mob mentality. They surrounded this man. They yelled in his face. And, you know, there's a lot made of the fact that he supposedly hit a young woman. Uh, I think that plays into the, the drunk males in the group probably putting on bravado. I think they were, you know, standing up for a damsel in distress type situation. Well, the young woman in question, her reliability has come under serious scrutiny because um, her name's Madison Cohen. She destroyed evidence of the supposed injuries that she had. Um, she lied to the police about the injuries she had. Now, I, and she appears as a star witness. And the, the judge allowed her anim anonymity. This just seems incredibly biased. I think... When a man is facing life imprisonment, when um, a younger man is dead, when there's others injured, she should have been obliged to appear in person. Um, apparently she's nicknamed the River Queen. The, the, this just reeks of manipulation and incitement, you know, inciting a mob. And I think she should definitely come under scrutiny. Um, because a big part of this argument is that he was the violent one, he punched her, you can see in the footage, she puts her hand on him. And he's kind of looking over to his wife. Now, I will say this. I don't think he entirely helped his own case. He did lie. Um, that never helps the situation. He did lie to the police. But you know what? So did all the others. No one in this situation was entirely honest. He was the only one that admitted it on the stand. I don't think he's very good at communicating. My impression is... He, um, he has a bit of an accent. I don't know if he's um, what his background is. Uh, I suspect European. Um, he has a bit of an accent. I, I don't think he's the best communicator. The way he sort of delivers things is a little bit deadpan. But again, that doesn't absolve him of the right to self-defense. Um, what really angers me is people saying, that, oh, he should have just walked away. He should have been an adult. It angers me because I think they're not putting themselves in this position. They're not trying to understand what it would be like to be surrounded, surrounded by people yelling in your face. That's a scary situation for anyone. Now, again, he said contradictory things. Um, he didn't help his own case. And I think he should certainly serve some time. I would say he should serve time for manslaughter. I would uh, concur um, with what the lady uh, I've just watched said. He should serve some time. He done you know, you can't just lash out with a knife. But I honestly believe if we were not hearing about um, his trial, we would hear be hearing about drunk teens beat a man to death or hospitalise a man. I really, really believe that because they convinced them themselves he was a predator and they were out to get him. You could see that by the way they're, they're pointing in his face and surrounding him. How anyone could say that, you know, they were harmless is delusional. So until I see evidence that really, really makes me believe that this guy was just coming in and he was a dangerous maniac, I, I do believe this was a case of a mob versus one man. And I think, I think the trial was biased. I think it was a small town trial. Yes, he got to appear on the stand. Yes, he had defence lawyers, but there's something rotten about the whole thing. Um, I mean, why is it the star witness gets to enjoy anonymity? Why is it their lies are ignored? Um, the jury apparently took only one day to deliver um, the verdict. If they're selected locally, well, you know, a young young guy has died locally. It would not at all surprise me if those jurors just had the mindset, oh, we have to put this guy away. Because, you know, it would have been a big story locally. A young guy has died. So there would have been sensationalism involved. Did Nicholas Muir get a fair trial? I'm not entirely sure that he did. And without knowing all the details of that, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not blaming his lawyers. I think they've done their best. But um, I, I do have questions about the jury and I do have questions about the whole way this was conducted. Um, I mean, they, you know, they saw the footage and they still couldn't, bring themselves to see that he was acting in self-defense. I don't understand that. I don't understand how anyone could see that footage and not 
consider, at least consider that he was acting in self-defense. There's something very rotten about this. Anyway, that's my gut feeling. I may be wrong. I may well be totally wrong. Maybe I've totally, totally misunderstood this, and this guy is dangerous. Apparently, he has no criminal record. Now, do you not think a dangerous predator or a violent individual would have at least some other, um, something else on a police file? You know, he's 54 years old, and until this incident, he apparently didn't even have a parking ticket. Um, on the stand and in interviews, he always seems soft-spoken. I just don't get the impression this is some sort of um, dangerous maniac. I could be wrong. Now, that brings me to the second part of the video, because one of the things that came out of this case, and, you know, this could be echoed in any number of cases involving teenagers and an adult. It's this mindset that teenagers, and again, any teenagers watching this, I'm not generalising, but it's a mindset that if someone's young, they have no responsibility. And I really get angry with this mindset, that, oh, they're just kids. Anyone who's been in this situation where they've kind of been up against a teenage gang, and I have, I've been in that situation as a teenager, um, and as a young man in my 20s, I had a few situations. It's pretty scary. Because a group of healthy young men, 16, 17 years old, I call them young men. Okay, you could call them kids. I'm going to call them young men um, in this context. You know, they're physically strong. They are geared up on this sort of group dynamic. Um, they could be dangerous. The fact of the matter is adults have been killed in this country by groups of teenagers. Adults. I've read numerous cases of young fathers standing up to teenage jobs who've been vandalised in the car and they go outside and they're killed, they're beaten to death, kicked to death. Because individually you get a 35-year-old man and a 17-year-old, um, chances are the 35-year-old man will win. You get five, six, seven, 17 year olds a 35-year-old has no chance. That is what infuriates me about people who defend teenage groups as if they're harmless. They're ignoring that dynamic. They're ignoring that dynamic. And in this case, the defendant had health problems. Apparently, he'd gone through a quadruple heart bypass. So I don't care what weight he is. I would say he's a more vulnerable party versus, you know, a group of healthy young men. Um, and the fact they were drunk, yes, it can make people vulnerable, but can also make them more volatile, more confident, more dangerous. Um like I say, I don't think he helped his own case, but there's just something about that that I find really troubling. But more broadly, I really, really challenge those who have this attitude that because someone is 15, 16, 17, um, 18 is technically legally an adult in this country, but 15, 16, 17 at least, that they're harmless, that they're harmless. That is so, so stupid because a group of, any group actually, can potentially be dangerous except maybe children like really little children but teenagers are not little children you know a 16 year old can drive um and smoke in this country at least they could get a driving license um so i really push back against this idea that they're harmless um they're really not and more often than not they believe their age protects them because sadly it does Apparently, on both sides of the Atlantic, I would say the American system's harsher than ours, but apparently not in this case. It sends out the message that a group of teenagers can harass a man, surround him, yell in his face, and none of them will face any consequence. Well, yes, except from what he done, which was reckless. One of them died and four were injured, but none of the others are going to face any legal consequences for their actions. The girl that doesn't appear to be facing any consequence for her lies which escalated the whole thing. Um, and I want to be clear here, I'm not saying he's totally innocent. I'm not saying uh, Nikolai Mew should absolutely walk scot-free. He did lash out with a deadly weapon. He, he should be held accountable for that. Um, but I am convinced, had he not defended himself in any way, let's say he just used his fists, right? Let's say he just pushed someone. Um, they would have laid into him. I have no doubt about that. They would have laid into him. They, they wouldn't have let this guy go. Um, 
So I really, really challenge the narrative that teenagers are the same as little children that could harm this. They're just kids. We know from mass shootings in America that teenagers have done appalling things. Um, but it's disgusting that, you know, a, an adult can find themselves in a situation where they're confronted by an antisocial teenage gang um, who are drunk, who don't know what they're saying, who don't care about what the truth is in a situation, and they surround a person. And if you defend yourself, I mean, it's the same in this country. If I get surrounded by teenagers and I feel fear for my safety and I push one woman, they get injured, I'll be the one arrested. You know, the law is an ass. It's, um, I think it's far, far too protective of young offenders. Um, and I think there needs to be much, much more responsibility put on teenagers unless it's proven that they have serious learning difficulties or something to that effect. But if they're coherent, if they know right from wrong, I, I don't think they should just be given a green light to behave as they wish and then hide behind the rage. That's not part of the adult world. I mean, how do you prepare them for the adult world if you're saying to them, well, you could do what you want and you could just use your age as an excuse? Um, and, you know, to those adults who are pushing this narrative, or oh, we all done, this is another one I hear, we all done stupid things when we were young. Yeah, we do things that we regret, but the average person doesn't doesn't engage in mob mentality. The average person doesn't engage in gang violence. Maybe, you know, if you disagree with me, maybe you did. But normalising that behaviour by saying, oh, everyone done it, is nonsense. Firstly, it's not true. But secondly, it legitimises what should not be legitimised. I, I just find it profoundly depressing. And okay, I'm going back to this case, I'm using it as an example, but this man, he's 54, if he spends 40 years in prison, he'll be 94, he'll probably pass away before then. He'll be vulnerable in prison because he'll be labelled a child killer, even though the young man who died isn't a child. You know, he'll probably be labelled a pervert because that's what they smeared him as, even though there's zero evidence that he has any sort of predatory behaviour. Um, so he'll be vulnerable inside. His life is over. And I just find that profoundly depressing because of the implications it has. Um, and it's the same in this country. We've had cases where adults have stood up for themselves and they've been on the receiving end of justice. Um, there needs to be a situation, you know, thinking of Britain, where if you have a teenage gang and an adult stands up to them, that adult is protected by the law. I'm talking within reason. I'm not saying if they... Um, go out and kill a dozen people or something, you know, within reason. But let's, let's present the picture, right? It's late at night and a group of teenagers are throwing stones at a car or a lamppost or something like that, or they're racing scooters up and down the street. And a man uh, has to get to work to the next, get to work the next day, or he has young children who are trying to sleep, or it could be any sort of situation like that. But he goes outside to confront them. And then it turns into verbal abuse and they throw stones at him. And he, um, you know, he's then in this confrontational situation and they, they lay into him because they're high on drugs or they're drunk or whatever, but they have that power dynamic, that group dynamic. It has happened. This isn't hyperbole. Literally, this sort of thing has happened. Um, so I think the law needs to get much, much tougher on young offenders. This notion that Oh, well, they're young so they can be rehabilitated. Well, I've made my position on rehabilitation clear. I think if there are signs of remorse and if there's signs someone could change, that should maybe be encouraged. But giving a green light to young offenders by basically saying you can do this, but you're just going to get a tap on the wrist is just plain wrong. I don't think it helps them in the long run because it isn't teaching them that there's consequences for actions. Um... I feel very strongly about this because I have personal experience. I've mentioned this before. Me and my family were literally driven by our home, from our home, by teenage gangs. I was a teenager myself at the time. I was 16 at the time. 20 years ago, over 20 years ago, and I remember what that felt like, the fear, the anxiety. So anyone who thinks a group of teenagers, particularly if they've been drinking or they're on drugs, are harmless 
is an idiot. I'm sorry to be blunt, but they are. They've, they must have had a sheltered life if they've never experienced that sort of dynamic where they have to deal with that. You can't just calmly compromise. And as for walking away, easier said than done when a mob is surrounding you, literally surrounding you, blocking your exit path. Um, by the way, in this case, he stated that the reason he was going towards the mob is because his wife was on the other side. He had to go through them. He had no other choice. Or maybe he could have went back, but he said that, um, you know, he learned from experience not to turn his back. And that makes sense. Um, I'll just conclude by saying everyone's responsible for their own actions, including teenagers. And I'm sick and tired of this idea that just kids are not responsible for their own actions. You know, we make allowances for people making mistakes to a point like uh, smoking when you're underage or um, I don't know, maybe stealing a tenor from your parents. Those sort of um, misdeeds can be forgiven. But when it starts elevating to the point where you are basically have no fear, no issue with yelling at strangers, with harassing strangers, with violently assaulting strangers, I'm talking broadly here, then you're growing into, you're evolving into a dangerous individual. I take the view that without tough justice, young offenders just get more and more emboldened and they become hardened adult offenders. That's my take. I think the enabling culture that has prevailed for decades for young offenders, it's got a lot to answer for. And those adults who justify it and they say, oh, they're just kids, those people really, really, really need a word with themselves. It's, it's abhorrent to me that a 35-year-old man or woman, particularly man, going about his business, 40-year-old, um, 50-year-old, um, knows full well that if he's confronted by a group of teenagers, he can't win. If he defends himself, he's the adult. He should have walk, walked away. He'll be criminally liable. And if he does nothing, then they'll lay into him. It, it's a vile situation. And the law has to be much, much tougher on this sort of thing. I don't think it is. And I know that's probably sound very detached from what I was talking about, but it is about the mentality. Most people, it seems, have taken this um, new side, but there are quite a number of people also taking the line, oh, he was an adult, he should have walked away, or even smearing him as an evil killer, um, rather than a man who lashed out in a context of self-defense. I don't think he should have done it that way. He certainly shouldn't have used a knife. Um, and he should serve some time for manslaughter, definitely. You know, I think it would be wrong if he just walked away scot-free. That would be um, hard for the family of um, the young guy that died. But frankly, that young guy wasn't totally innocent. He wasn't. He was part of a mob harassing this man. 